Skynet is becoming self-aware, but they're coming in the form of Tesla robots, and we have to talk about it on the Brewman's podcast and radio show, airing on 550 KFYI. And wherever you get your podcast, my name is Rob Hunter, joined by Mike Russell. We bring people together for well-crafted conversation over a drink or two. Mike Russell, what will be drinking today? I'm, bl- I'm blaming our buddy Dallas on this one. This is the uh, Belching Beaver No Worries IPA. It's a West Coaster. That's right. It's a West Coaster, and I'd check it out, and I, I just think that uh, the name of the brewery is absolutely hilarious, so I just, I'm going to go with it, you know. I learned a lot about beavers when I was in Wyoming, and learned about oh. like, how they how they work, how they function, and it's 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 pretty fascinating. They are fascinating creatures. In what way? I mean, obviously, they, they have, like, a big tail. They build dams. They do all kinds of interesting things. They're They're, like, little cute animals, so we don't, you know, hate them. Yeah, they're not actually eating the trees. They're cutting the trees down so they eat the top of the trees. Oh. And their teeth, their teeth, their teeth are absolutely fascinating things. And they, they don't really build dams as much as they just build big huts in the river. And they always build a door upstream. And so it's, it's like they construct it so it is a little house. It is mm. just wild and fantastic. I love the nature kind of stuff. I'm a yeah, it's, it's interesting to see, and you've kind of introduced me to this, the, the, the ecosystem, if you will, and how it works a certain way. And if one thing gets out of balance, it upsets the entire ecosystem. Yeah. So that is where all these animals come into play. Like a very regulated population is good for everybody. It is a well-regulated militia and population. Yes, fantastic. Beautiful yes, thing. I'm a big Second Amendment guy. So let's get into it. I This story came out this week, and it's, it's really appropriate <laughs> timing. I am afraid of robots. I think robots will take over. I, I know Terminator kind of thing. It's, it's going to be not good for society. It is all done with the best intentions. It's all a noble uh, venture. But uh, now that uh, Elon Musk is involved, this is going to happen fast. He is literally a done deal. He's developed essentially little human robots that can. What are the stats on this, Rob? So these robots are going to be five feet, eight inches tall, 125 pounds. They're going to be able to carry 45 pounds, deadlift 150 pounds, walk at five miles per hour, and carry 10 pounds in an ex- arm extended lift. So these are. The real deal. They're full of neural nets and computer things, and yeah, that's where you know autopilot cameras. The neural nets when it starts learning the artificial intelligence when it starts learning and adapting and starting to become its own thing. That is where I'm having a problem. And this all started. We know this. This is settled science. It all started with the Roomba. (laughs) All of this started with the Roomba. The first time I saw a Roomba, I said, I, that's it. That's it. That's the first step to us losing control to robots because this thing knows where it went. This thing knows where it's vacuumed before. And then it goes back to its home. And this was how, what, what 15 years ago the Roomba came out? Probably. It, I mean, think about technology where it was then. This was, that was unbelievable. And today you're like, yeah, of course it does. I've got a pool sweeper that does the same thing. I've got lawn mowers that do the same thing. It is not okay. It was the first step. And that's why when I go to Rob's house, when that little thing comes out, like creeping out of the uh, the side of the house, I want to stab it because he it's, does. It's gonna no because it's gonna. He's like a dog. He's like ah. It's gonna team up with one of these these little Tesla robots, and they're gonna take your house over, buddy. It's it, it will it will have a purpose in your home when the robot takes. Over. Well, it might be our destiny because these are you know this is just going to happen. It's already happening. Like that's the crazy part about this is that every time Elon Musk comes out with something, it's like oh by the way, it's already done. It's yeah. not like oh it's in development. Yeah, it's in development technically, but when it came out with Tesla, it was like okay great. Now it's like two percent of the car market is Tesla. So this is going to happen. And the idea is that it's going to replace people, you know, jobs that that they don't like, you know, like uh, digging ditches, for example, like mm-hmm. jobs that no one really wants to do. So you have robots to them. Now, Musk's vision is twofold when it comes to these robots. One, world, world is that they will replace most of human work. And then there'll be a universal basic income somehow derived from the work that the robots do. But then there's the second part with the neural link, which I've heard him talk about before. This is like a connection to your brain to some big oh, cloud where all of human information it. will end up being stored so stop. instead of it being on your phone it will be in your brain you can google things in your brain you're like uh or you can be like okay i'm going to connect with elon musk for a neural link this is very freaky science fictiony kind of stuff not fictiony 
it's science. It's musky. That's what it is. It's mm-hmm. not. There's no science fiction involved with this. It's Elon Musk. Elon Musk isn't one of those guys where you always they always come over your house and all they do is talk about the stuff they're going to do. They talk about, oh yeah, I'm working on this. I'm going on this. I'm gonna. We're working on doing this, and maybe I'll start this business or that business. Elon Musk is the opposite of that. The minute something comes out of his mouth, it's been done. He's already developed it. He just didn't want to talk about it. He said, oh yeah, by the way, I do have robots. Yep. Not, I'm going to develop robots. I have robots, little humanoids. And I think it was, was it Ford? I forget the um, I forget the company that came up with it, but the, they're the dogs. They look like dog, the robot dogs that they're you know selling to police so they can go into oh, yeah. places and you know stuff like that and hostage situations and whatnot. So um actually the uh the, this week the uh in Washington DC, the guy that had the truck and pulled it up said he had a bomb in front of the Library of Congress. Um, they sent a robot out with a phone to him. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, here you go. That, it's a, cops do that a lot. Like, it's like a oh, squatty looking thing, and they're like, Bruh! remote control it into I'm there okay to keep that. officers safe. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with keeping officers safe. I'm all about that. I'm all about keeping everybody safe. Our men and women in the military, keep them safe. Cool. Yeah, I'm a robot operator. Like, drones, I love drones. Drones are cool because they don't put our men and women in harm's way. But this Just is a big question, though. And I don't disagree with anything you just said, but the bigger question is, just because we can, does it mean we should? So, for example, even in gene editing, right, CRISPR, you can have a kid and you'd be like, oh, I want the, the kid to have blue eyes and brown hair. What are you talking okay? about CRISPR? What is that? Th- that's gene editing, essentially. So, oh. you you know, so you could pick the, the eye color, you could maybe even pick the sex of the baby down the line. Is this something that human beings should be involved in? Are there ethical concerns with it? Yes, there are. It's bizarre to be going into this world. I listened to a conversation a guy gave a couple months ago. He's planning on living to be, he said, several hundred years old. The guy's probably 55 already. And he's like, I'm going to live to be 250, 300 years old. I'm like, what? Is that Ricky Bobby? (laughs) 97% of us die. <laughs> yeah, he's some doctor and he's like, oh yeah, all these advances in human technology will allow us to live double, maybe triple what our what our lifespan is like biblical. We got some of the biblical characters live to be like 900 years old. Yeah, um, I don't think I honestly, even as a God fearing man, I don't think there's a lot of moral issues with that kind of stuff. I just think it's us figuring out like uh, it like genetically modified tomatoes that are resistant right. to something like a pesticide or something like that. You, you, you figure these things out, resistant to drought, things like that. We can feed the world. So why not do it with humans? If you want to get into your, uh, hop into your CRISPR, I still, I'll, you'll explain that later to me, uh, this CRISPR thing and start pushing buttons on what kind of kid you want. I want one without these diseases. Okay. I want one without this. Okay. We figured it out. Even even as even as God fearing people, I think that God wants us to figure things out. Why not? Why? I mean, this we figured it with medicines. Well, we figured surgeries. We have found out a way to cut the body open and put new parts in. Like that's not. No one saw any moral problems with that. So, well, and they I may have was, at the very yeah. beginning, you know, because they, you okay, know, sure, sure. Yeah, I, I don't know because we were obviously not around at the very beginning right. of that. But I don't see a lot of people protesting hospitals. Stop surgery now. Yeah. Stop mm-hmm. surgery now. You know, you know, the end is near. No, it's not. It's not really. Well, and, and you think about like what we're going through with this pandemic. If there was a way that you could genetically alter the human DNA, would it be resistant to virus? And you could do it in 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 the womb, so in to speak. Utero. In utero. Why would we not do that? I mean, yeah. and then you check about now, yeah, but then there's the ebb and flow too of resources and and how many people can live on the planet at once without really destroying it or destroying ourselves because we're already what? about eight billion strong. But necessity is the mother of all creation. Absolutely. So if you know, it's it's hard to solve a problem that isn't there. So you, sometimes you got to create the problem to uh, to invent the solution. Mm-hmm. So I I'm I'm not really the robot thing still freaks me out. If we're playing with us. If we're given dominion over this earth, fine, good. We play with us, good. But once we introduce something that can do what we do, that's when we have a problem. And morally, I don't care. I don't have a moral problem with it. It's just not a good idea. 
in my life could be one big vacation with robots doing all the work. We just get some money, hang out, go to the beach. I don't know, drink a couple that? beers. I think certain yes. countries have tried that. Well, and there's just too many people that actually like to do things and like to work and create that that would create a problem. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not a type that I can sit still. I can sit still for a while, yeah. not forever. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm not yeah. all about that. Yeah, exactly. In a moment, we got a guy's trip coming up. I think it'd be easy to plan. It's not. Coordination is difficult. We will get into that here on the Brewmance on the radio on 550 KFY and the Brewmance podcast. Thanks for being with us right here on 550 KFY. This is the Brewmance. I'm Mike Russell. He is Rob Hunter. These, this is well crafted conversations around wonderful beer. Rob, what Woo. do we have today? We have Belching Beavers No Worries IPA. It's a West Coast IPA. We're going home for this, Mike, because you and I are West Coast IPA fans. So yes. let's see if Belching Beaver can live up 6.2% ABV. So we'll see. Here's the interesting thing about this, though. When I went okay. to go get it today, it comes in a six pack of Tall Boys because I saw yeah. the price and I was like, 14 bucks oh, for four cans. And I was like, oh, it's six cans. So I didn't feel as bad spending $14 on six pan tall cans of IPA. And I thought we had this. Come on, Rob. I thought I brought you around on this whole thing because uh, uh, please understand that six beers, even four beers. If we go to Helton, we're paying around $20, $22 for four beers, yep. right? Any yep. brewery, name a brewery around town. So if you have four beers and it costs 12 bucks, it's like, well, that's, that's saving money. That's all I'm but saying. It's a night out though. That's the difference between that and this, but there's still a sticker shock there. But when I picked it up and I was like, Ooh, six cans. I definitely felt better about it. I was like, okay, right. so six cans, 14. I get, I can't even do that math, but it's definitely worth it. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going, we are, we are only five weeks away from something very important. And that is a big hunt that we talked about last week. Uh, and Rob's going to go on a pig hunt. I got a bison hunt and it's a guy's trip. There are seven men that are going on this trip. We are uh, all going to be hanging out together, doing our own hunts and our own everything. And I thought this would be easy because we are grown assets men. And we understand, you know, some of us are family men, some of us aren't, but, but at the same time, all of us have careers. Most of us have small businesses. Like I thought everyone would have their stuff together. No, it's, it's dead silence between me sending out an email <laughs> And then I might get three replies. As a matter of fact, I had to have camping chat. I said, dude, you have to reply. No, I told you, Rob. I said, yep. dude, just will you just, I know you got your deposit and everything down. I need you to reply that you had done that. So everyone to spur everyone along, or at least, I don't know, hit reply and say, I'm on it. Something. See, I'm wondering if this is an email problem, because if you're like me, you hate email. Because I'm going to look at my, I'm going to pull up my email accounts on my phone. I have about nine email accounts on my phone. That's a slight exaggeration, but it's not really. I have 13,749 emails at the moment. In my Gmail account, which is the one Mike used, my, my private account, 8,543 emails. That's a lot of emails in emails one Emails are unread emails. That's a distinction. Those are all unread emails. Most of it is I have subscribed to a bunch of lists. So I get on these lists. So I think that that is a challenge in how we communicate. Because remember okay. back in when you first got your email address. Mine was an AOL email address. First email address I ever had. And it was awesome. You could email your friends. And you, there was no real a lot of junk mail back then. So you could keep track of it. But not only do I get junk mail. Because I've subscribed to like a thousand lists. I'm just like I gave up. So that's my challenge with email. It's just not an effective form of communication for me. Um, but I do know Rob likes to text message. Mm -hmm. Rob is more of a text guy. Yes. I there was there was a show called uh Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Regis Regis was, was <laughs> yes. And he would say, he would say, Who has the fastest fingers? And it was like who could like get it, whatever it was, or type the answer fastest or something like that. Rob would dominate. A smart dude, loves trivia, and his fingers, it's disturbing to watch. He, <laughs> it's freakish. Like what like an X-Men like uh like superpower that you have with your thumbs. Just your thumbs is uh, but then sometimes you'll put Not it ready. down and go like keyboard style 
and I'm, I, it's, it's, it's mine. So, so that's why it's a good idea. So getting back to guys, grown assets, men getting together and going on a hunt, maybe a group text is the best thing, but my block there is I hate group texts. Oh, hate, hate. because I have a watch that I wear. Rob said, I've worn this for two years. Rob knows I love this watch and um, it's got all my hunt spots on it. It's got fish spots on it. Like it's, it's, it's my baby. Oh, yeah. But if I got a text, it, it tells me I got a text, which I love because especially if I'm driving or something, I can quick check my watch and just see somebody's trying to get a hold of me. Cool. Got it. Um, when I'm in a maybe hunt or something like that, I can just look down. And I have to pull my phone out. Um, but then it goes. Bzz, 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 and it won't stop because everyone's starting to chat into the group, the, the text, and I can't handle it. But it's but if I'm looking for communication in this guy's trip. I think I have to just bite the bullet and do it. Well, and that, that is interesting too, because I'm I'm involved in, I don't know, probably four or five or six group text messages, and they're sort of ongoing. And Mike and I are in one of them that are the same. And some days it's radio silence for two, three days. Then for the next three days, it's boom, 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 like Mike was just describing. So those can be distracting too. But maybe there's rules. Maybe we set up some rules and we say, okay, we need to communicate certain things because we need to coordinate about, okay, who's bringing the beer? Who's bringing the yeah. steak? Who's right. bringing the liquor? Who's bringing the sides? You yeah. know, because all those things have to be discussed and it's best to discuss them now, not in four and a half weeks when it's three days away from going on our adventure. So that's, it's just an interesting part. Maybe we should do a poll of our group. Do you like group texts or do you like emails? Because you're not replying to my emails. So do you want to do text or what? Because I think the text part, There'll be more responses almost to the obnoxious part. Email gets ignored very easily. So it's like, yeah, you can't have a good scenario. <laughs> no, I, I think I'd bite the bullet and do that. I mean, even going into food. I mean, I just said, you know, Rob and I's company, we're going to sponsor the, the dinner on Saturday night because everyone's going to be there. Maybe, you know, I think Rob's going to get a little late on Friday night, uh, but everyone's going to be there. So we'll have a big, you know, you know, meat and potatoes kind of thing. Yeah. And that's easy and, and basic. And I'm probably going to get some stuff for like a lunch or something like that, maybe Saturday or maybe sun, uh, Sunday breakfast. And then I think everyone is going to bring their own stuff. I just don't I don't know how to handle the food part. Booze part's fine. I think Rob nailed it. I think everyone should just bring what they dig and enough to share. And then I think we're good. It's like a potluck. Yeah. So booze potluck. <laughs> we're inventing new things here on the Brewmans. A booze luck. Love it. That's what we call a, a booze luck. Dig it. Um, writing that down now yeah do that and then i'll i'll, I'll reply to the email be like all right we're calling it a booze luck here's what i'm bringing yes okay and good. it could be like all right i'm bringing a bottle of my favorite whiskey okay mike what are you bringing all right i'm gonna bring you know 15 beers yeah because there's what seven guys yeah, yeah. so that's you know that's why I, I, I said enough for you and to share on purpose yeah. because i'm like okay if you're thinking about beers and you have seven people so you could probably bring a bottle of whiskey seven guys could go through that pretty quickly yeah, oh, yeah, very quick. Yeah, but when it comes to beers, is two per person appropriate or is it more like four per person? Because let's say we drink beer Friday night and we do liquor on Saturday night. And maybe we have a little bit of something, something on Sunday morning before we <laughs> before we check out, if you well, will. The, well, yeah, essentially to, to shake off Saturday night is probably why we do <laughs> yeah. something on Sunday morning. Like, who's bringing Bloody Marys? Let's, let's right. pick that in for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I think that the, the problem is, I think we're dealing with men. I, let's talk like grownups. I mean, we're dealing with men. Women would have this dialed in. And there's no, it's so funny to see women plan a trip because there's no real man etiquette going on. Like Rob and I are kind of tiptoeing with the, how do we ask to everybody bring a booze, not bring a booze, whatever. They just dive right in. Okay, ladies, who's bringing this? Okay, I'm going to bring this, and I want you to do that, and I want you to do that, and everyone's happy. Everyone gets through it. I don't understand what, how, how we are as men. And the problem is, I, I think one of, the, one of the issues is we are a team of alphas. Yeah. And so I think that's, that's you know, small business owners, driven dudes, and it's like, oh, okay. No, no one really wants to follow in line here, but I'm like, somebody then just step up because I'm trying. It's like a pack of wolves. No one wants to be the alpha, but if there's if if there's if there's no one doing it, one of them's gonna step up and do it. <sighs> alpha, I mean, I mean, that's people, it. Let's go. 
And I think that part of it, the challenge is with that there's a lot of groups coming together. So Mike's the connecting point to all these groups. So there's certain people that I know and certain people that I don't. Certain people I know well, certain people I don't know well. Yeah. So, you know, there's a couple of people who don't know anybody else in the group other than you and me. Yeah. So that could be part of it, too. There could be some, well, I don't know if I should reply. I don't know. All the people on this chain. Who knows what gets into people's heads? Yeah. So let's try the text and we'll report back and see if that actually is is resulting in conclusions rather than email space <laughs> yeah i gotta try something something has to something has to be uh, uh tried because email did not work and if you have any tips please reach out to us cheers at brewmance.beer on instagram at the underscore brewmance facebook you can find us just by typing in the brewmance because we need to know if you've done like a guy trip with seven guys of which you know everybody relatively knows each other but there's a couple of guys that don't know a couple of guys what's mm-hmm. the best way to coordinate we need some tips yes. and what beer would you bring on your adventure or what liquor would you bring on your adventure? We'd love to know that as well. Keep in mind, it's a very, it's a very athletic trip. We're going to do a lot of hunting, a lot of walking, a lot of this and that. So, so keep that in mind when you give the tips on beer. Absolutely. Up next, buying his daughter a car. Mike Russell's adventure in the used car world right here on the Brewman's on the Radio 550 KFYI. <laughs> Mike is going on an adventure. An adventure to buy his now 16-year-old Ooh. daughter, happy birthday, Jilly, a brand new or a used car. Brand new for her. Welcome to the Brewmance on the radio and the Brewmance podcast. It airs on 550 KFY, 6 to 7 p.m. Saturday nights in Phoenix, Arizona. This is going to be a good conversation. I can't wait to see what Mike is struggling with here. But before we get to the struggles, Mike... What is the beer that is helping you with the struggles yes. this week on the Brew Mats? Definitely is uh, the Belching Beaver No Worries West Coast IPA. I'm excited about that because Belching Beaver's offering to me has essentially been Phantom Bride, which is fantastic beer. Yeah. Knock you on your tuchus kind of beer. I like this uh, lighter West Coast vibe they got coming out with. So, uh, so yeah, I was, I was excited to see it. So, are you worried? even though the beer is no worries about this process of buying your daughter a vehicle, because it's like a rite of passage, right? For, for most kids. I remember when I got my car. So I'll give you the story of mine real quick. When I was about 15, my grandmother said to me, she says, look, I kept this car for you. Cause my grandfather died when I was like 10 or 11 or something like that. Nice. And he had bought a 1984 Buick LeSabre. So she's yes. like, I'm gonna I'm gonna sell it to you for a dollar because that's the that's the rule, right? Got to give your grandmother a dollar. She gives you the car, and that was awesome because I got a car essentially for a dollar at the yeah. age of sixteen and a half. Amen. So you, in Massachusetts, you, you can get your permit at sixteen. If you take driver's ed, you can get your license when you're sixteen and a half. If you don't take driver's ed, you get away till seventeen. So I took driver's ed, and I got the car, and it was like nineteen feet long. It was amazing, but it was <laughs> it was a super easy process, and it was. You know, because it was super easy, it was seamless. I got the car. The deal I had with my parents was, you have to pay the gas, you have to pay the insurance. So I had to go get a job to to mm-hmm. do that. So that's yeah. my, my first job at 16 and a half years old, bagging groceries. And that presented to me at 16 and a half, freedom. I could come and go from my house, not quite whenever I wanted, but mostly whenever I wanted. That was what a car and a license represented to me. Yes. And- Bye, mom. Yeah. Now here's the deal, though. This this is the problem for me, and it's it's like tenfold because I'm dealing with a a daughter who has a keen awareness of finance. She does have a really solid awareness of hey, money doesn't grow on trees. Things aren't expected, um, so she does not want an expensive car. She just says, "I want something old. I want something cheap." I just, I don't want to be a burden financially on the family. And as nice. cute as that is, you kind of tap, tap, okay, sweetie, is it? Because we've been saving for this for years. We, we, we planned out a lot of our stuff, college, car, uh, not wedding. We haven't done that. Uh, <laughs> college, car. Let's hold we, off on that saved. for another 16 years or so. Well, thank you. We've, yeah. uh, we've, the, Uncle Rob's doing his job. Yeah. So there is, there is, um, so there, there's money there to get a car. The problem is, if this were two years ago, we'd be getting with that budget. We'd be getting a dang nice ride. Now, after COVID, uh, the average used car right now is, I think, at $17,200. Oh. 
the average used car because there was a microchip shortage or something like that. So they couldn't build a lot of new cars. So it drove the price of the used car market through the roof. So you're thinking like 100,000 mile car and you're like, oh, fine. But here's the deal too, another fold, another level on that. I don't want, I don't want hassle. Daddy wants to take care of his girl and I want her car to run and be safe. Yeah. But I don't every other week, dad, this happened. Dad, we got to take in the shop for this. Dad, we got to take in the shop for that. I would rather pay more to not deal with that because I don't, you know, everybody's like, oh, she's 16. She should have a junk beater car like we all had. Okay, that's fine. I don't know a lot about cars. I know my limits. So um, as much as I can sit and drink a great beer and stare at the engine, I don't know what the hell I'm staring at. <laughs> I have no idea. Me and Camping Chad would just sit there with the hood up just looking at it going, oh, huh? well. That looks important. Yeah, it looks like a hose. The nose. Is that where you put the oil? Like, yeah, the noise looks like it's coming from over there. Yeah. <laughs> What's that thing? I don't know. Right. Your guess is as good as mine. I know it's not the battery. That I can do. I can change batteries. I can change oil. That's about the limit. I had a straight six uh, CJ7 when I was in high school. And that thing's like Legos. It's like a Volkswagen engine, essentially. It's, you know, I, I, could, I could tune it up. I could change the spark plugs. That was pretty easy. But as far as troubleshooting goes on these new cars or newer cars, anything above 2010, I don't know what to do. With. So that's yeah. where I am. And it's just, it is such a, it's such a hassle. And then you start thinking about, oh my God, my daughter's going to be on the freeway. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's not a warning to everybody else. That's just, I want my daughter to be safe. And I, my rule number one is uh, treat everyone on the freeway like they're an idiot. Yep. And you'll Good be strategy. okay. Assume they don't know how to drive, and you'll be okay. If you if you drive that defensively, you'll be just fine. Well, that, that's a very interesting point because you were telling a story about you know Jilly behind the wheel. So she's sixteen years old, first time she gets to touch the steering wheel and put the put the pedal to the metal, if you will. Not quite that way. Oh, I'm sure she but will. It's interesting because what they don't teach you in drivers ed is. Being calm on the road is is actually an effective way to learn how to drive because you got to understand you can't control anybody else's behavior. And if you're freaked out behind the wheel at everyone else's behavior, it's going to lead to stress and anxiety. And I was I, I, I get angry behind the way I used to, but I'm much calmer now. And I find that I'm a more effective driver when I'm calmer. So Lady Brumance and I were driving down the 51, which is a it's like a mini highway that drives right through the middle of Phoenix, right? Right. So they built this in the nineties, I think, and it just kind of splits Phoenix so we could get to and fro uh, North and South relatively quickly. And one day there was, I forget if it was a, someone's tire blew off or there was an accident, but I was calm and I was able to kind of navigate my way through it because I stayed calm. I didn't freak out. I was like, Oh my God, there's an accident. Ah! And that's a huge part about, I wish they taught me in driver's ed back in the day was stay calm. Granted, what 16 year old is calm at this point in life? Like, shut up, dude. Give me my yeah. license. I want to yeah, drive. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I drove way too fast. I, I mean, you think I drive fast now. I drove you way do. faster back in the day because oh, I had that big V8. Oh, I had a big V8 engine. I was just cruising down the street. Oh. Dang. Mm -hmm. It was good Rob stuff. drives fast. He's very I zippy. Do. I'm in an F-150. I'm just low and slow. Rob mm -hmm. is just burning it. Yeah. yeah. I, mm -hmm. I get excited when I catch up to him at an exit. <laughs> I'm like, ha! But once <laughs> you get going, fine. you're going. You just got to get there. You just got to get going. Mm -hmm. Can't be exactly. traffic lights, buddy. Yeah. That's I, true. The great equalizer in life, traffic lights. But here's the deal. Everybody's like, oh, just put it out. Put out a feelers on like social media and stuff like that. You got enough listeners, followers. They're definitely somebody's going to have something. I'm not buying from a private party. I'm you already not, did I that, was right? Burned so bad buying from a private party. The last time I did, I never going to do it again. Mm -hmm. I want, I want the inspections. I want the certification. I want the five year bumper to bumper warranty. I want it all. I just don't want a deal because I, you saw me pour thousands into the last truck I had. It was absolutely the worst experience ever. Yeah, yeah, and that's what you don't want your daughter to go through. So that's why yeah. this gets even trickier because now you're talking about paying. A decent amount of coin to get her first car. Yeah. More than you probably anticipated two, three, four, five years ago. It's three you know, times what I paid for my first car. Which is crazy. Like mine was a literally a dollar, right? Because my grandmother didn't drive is the other part of that story. So it's like, I got this car. I'll just keep it. 
So I think when my dad bought my brother his first car, I think he spent thirty five hundred bucks. Yeah, something like that. And that got him a decent car. Like remember, I got a decent car. I can't remember exactly what it was at this point because my brother kind of rolls through cars relatively quickly. Whereas I'm like, I hang on to cars forever. Like, yeah. I think my brother's had like 24 cars or something like that. And he's three years younger than me. So he's 40. Wow. My dad's yeah. had like 28 cars or something like that. I'm like, I've had four. I've had four cars. I'm 43 years old. That's it. I had a Buick. I had a Honda. I had a Honda. And I had a Honda. And I, the <laughs> current Honda I have, I traded in after a year because I wanted the hatchback version. Yeah. Is, did that count in the four? Yeah, that's the four. I've had four Shut cars up. in my life. Mm -hmm. No way. You yep. kept what you counted the old uh, blue Honda? Uh, the then, green Honda. Yeah. No, green so Hornet, green as we call it. Okay. So I had no, yeah. the Buick. I had the, the the Green Hornet. Got a doorbell here. We're just doing the show. It's all good. <laughs> then I had the black Civic, and now I have the blue Civic. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is Optimus. It was fantastic. It was a good exactly. ride. But, Very I mean, that's ride. the thing. Julie doesn't want a sedan. She wants a kind of a small SUV or a small pickup truck. And and so essentially what we've done is instead of being like, oh, 16th birthday, here's your car, you know, this and that. And understand, she's earned it. The girl's a no straight doubt. A student, volunteer. She, she's saving us two years of college by Pretty going fast. to college and high school at the same time. She has put in the work. So it's not like one percenter spoiling the kid kind of thing. But, you know, I, I want to get her something nice. So what we're going to do essentially is her birthday today. So what we're going to do is essentially say, here's your budget. You have six weeks until you actually get your driver's license. So let's take those six weeks and find you something you want. Awesome. I love it. So keep us updated on that progress because it is going to be a journey for sure. In a moment, when we continue on the Brewmats podcast and radio show, we're going to review our beer of the week, Belching Beaver's no worries. Stay right there. It's 550 KFYI. Welcome to the Brewmance. Mike Russell, Rob Hunter, and a beer. Rob, what are we drinking? It is Belching Beavers. No worries. IPA, a West Coast IPA. We will rate and review it for you here in just a few minutes on the Brewmance. Is obviously the majority of the country and the more majority of the world has been talking about Afghanistan this week. And we're not getting political here. It just it, it just brought up a, an interesting, I guess, an interesting topic. Because I look at the people uh, uh, in Afghanistan, I almost said Taliban. I mean, that's that's only, that their country's run by the Taliban now. But I look at Afghanistan, I look at the people, and, and this is prior to the desperation. I'm talking about, you know, uh, weeks and months ago when they were just kind of vibing and the United States military was there and they had their life. And I just, I thought of the simplicity of their life. And they all seemed, for the most part, pretty happy in what they yeah. had. You know, they kind of they go to work, they do their thing, they drive older cars and they just kind of if they do drive at all. And they, it's it's it, there, it didn't seem like there was a lot of go, 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 busy, 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 stress, stress, stress. It just seemed like I'm going to go to work and I'm going to stop at the market. And I'm going to grab some stuff and kids are doing good. The kids are going to the schools and and I'm just going to go home and cook and not have a lot of super materialistic things. And I'm just going to be. And I think that's that's interesting. I'm not saying I want to live there. I love my country more than anything in this world. I love this nation. I believe America is exceptional. And I love our state. Arizona is it to me. I just love, won't leave. So, well, the caveat there, there's this conditions exist. There's a little bit of fine print. <laughs> if it becomes California, <laughs> this is out the window. Right. A little bit of fine print there. But I, I, it's just interesting to look around the world into different nations, into different uh, cultures and really see what is what, what's out there and, and the way different people live. Rob, you travel so much more than I do. You've seen a lot more of the world than I have. Am I just is it, do I just have this like romantic view of what everything else uh, outside of the United States looks like? Or is it is it well, bad? Uh, it, it, I haven't been to any what we would call bad countries uh, that is on my list because I, d I would like to see that. I would like to see how people live in a place like Afghanistan. Obviously I'm not going to go there now with the Taliban in control. I don't right. think that that would be a wise decision, but do you know, imagine yeah. you go to a country in Africa, but you really want to experience what it's like in say Rwanda, or even if you go to Kenya, because a lot of people go on African safaris, my wife and I yes. will do that at some point, but it's, you got to go away from the cities and see like, how do, how do, how do people live? How do they stay happy? Because happiness is really a mindset. Like we have a certain view of it in America. Like, okay, you're happy. If you make a certain amount of money, you can buy a certain amount of stuff and you don't have any stress about your bills. Like you're able to meet your bills. You're not living paycheck to paycheck. That seems to be our idea of happiness where some places exist on basically no money, where 
they walk to go get water and they make their own food and they grow their own food. So it's just a different way to live. But that's how we all used to live. You want, I don't know how many thousands of years ago, millions of years ago, whatever, when humans popped around, let's say 100,000 years ago. That's how people lived. They had to figure it out. We have so many conveniences. Like, I don't have to hunt my food. I don't have to pick my food. I go to the grocery store. I'm like, oh, I load up the cart. Takes me, you know, 45 minutes. I'm good to go for a week. That's what's so amazing about this. But in seeing Afghanistan and the struggle, right? It's like, man, do I, could you live like that? Like, that's the question I always ask myself. If I were born in a different place, not in America, if I were born in Afghanistan, what would my life be like? Could it be possible for me to be happy? Could it be yes. possible? Yeah, it, it is. But because it's what you know. Yes. I mean, you think about okay. Go. We we began this show talking about the new Tesla robots. That's America. There is a woman in some other nation right now with a fifty pound pot of water on her head. That would think, why in the world would you need a robot? Why would <laughs> right. you even want to take that step? We have everything we need right here. And how wonderful would it be to live without the Kardashians? <laughs> and the that, pressures I'm, of being I'm capitalistic in a way, right? Envious. Mm -hmm. Because they don't have that garbage that fills right. their head. Their version of happiness is based on just their just their quality of life that they've made for themselves, not based on what we've put it to somebody else's standards. Like, I want to live like that. Yeah. I want to be like that. I can't believe that guy has a yacht. I don't. I can't believe that guy gets to go on four guided hunts a year, and I don't. So uh, instead of just, wow, look what I got. And I'm not patting myself on the back, but it was this week. That I, I got a, another opportunity to remind myself, and I know Rob reminds me a lot, is driving into work going, I'm making a good life driving into work right now to do a radio show with one of my best friends in the world that I call my brother. And I that's what I get to do. Here's my life. Why the hell am I worried about the sprinkler I got to replace this weekend? Who cares? You know, why am I stressing out about little stuff that I've got to do this recording or that recording? And oh my gosh, it's all this work is piling up. It's awesome work. Yes. So yeah, I, I mean, this this basically the radio gig is the pot on my head yeah. full of water <laughs> that I'm taking back to the family. And it's how cool is it? Why would I need anything else? But that's that perspective, right? It's 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 figuring out if you look at something like Afghanistan and you see all those people in this past week or so, trying to get out because they know what a, a change of regime means for them, particularly women, particularly young girls yeah, yeah. who there are reports that 12 year olds are being taken out of their home, 12 year old girls to be married off. Like that's, Can we I? don't, we don't even understand that because we think yeah. that is off limits. We think that is disgusting, but it's really happening. So you can understand how grateful we should be that we were not born there. Particularly Mike, we were just talking about his 16 year old daughter. She's going to get a car because she's going to get her license. In Afghanistan, a 16-year-old girl has a whole different experience, a whole different life. I don't That's even know if they're allowed right. to drive. Right. Yeah. In Saudi Arabia, they just gave women the right to drive. I don't know what age. And I think they just allowed some women to run for office. So as much as we gripe and we be and moan at each other about how awful America is, I'm like, I'll take this over anywhere else in the world. And I've been, I don't know, 12, 13, 14 countries or something like that. Some of them pretty awesome. Japan is awesome. Italy is awesome. Greece is awesome. But there's something special about where we live that allows us to essentially be who we want to be. And it's it's neat to be able to just, and we have to remind ourselves, to separate ourselves from the, the infighting in, of politics and yeah. social media and these influencers and things like, okay, you go take pictures of yourself. That's cute. That, that, that's fun. Um, that's not my vibe. So I, I choose to step away from it. And, and, and it kind of pulls you into the life that other countries have that don't have, you know, smartphones in their hand all the time. It kind of introduces you to that. And you're like, that's why they look so happy. <laughs> Because yes. they haven't burdened themselves with all of this nonsense. 
you know, they, they, they have it. They haven't been chained down by these things. Like I said, they just go to the Creek, put some water in the damn bucket and put it on their head and walk home. And they've got a great day. It's like, woo, got water for the day. Life is grand. You know, go pick some stuff out of the, out of the farm. Uh, the, I'm sorry, the, uh, the garden. And, uh, and maybe, you know, uh, you know, uh, get a calf. I don't, who knows what they do. Who knows? Exactly. But, it's but I'm just, teaching Rob how to do that. But that's the greatest part about learning how to be original man. Because the closer you get to that, the more in touch I think you are with everything. So I'm very excited for that as our guys trips coming up in about five weeks. Ugh. Speaking of, are we going to bring this beer? Belching Beavers No Worries IPA. Our buddy Dallas put it. Uh, he's trying this on social media. So we're like, okay, fine. We'll try it. Yeah. We'll try it with you, Dallas. So, Mike, what do you think? I dig it. Super hoppy. It, it is a little thicker than I like in, in maybe like a summer beer, like the no worries, the, the advertising on the front is, you know, the beaver in the, like he's in the river or whatever. He's just enjoying the sun. This isn't a very rivery, sunny beer. This mm. is a strong West coast IPA. I love West coast IPAs and I love this, but you always know me when the, when the image that I have on the can and then what actually hits my mouth is different. I don't, I, mm. It drives me a little batty. It's a good beer. It really is. But I, it just, it's not the summery, no worries kind of vibe that it's playing off to be. So I'm going to knock that a half point, and I'm going to take it down to a seven and a half. Okay. Whereas my biggest thing about it, at 6.2%, it's easy drinking. It flows mm -hmm. smooth. It's got, a, it's got a bitterness to it. So I'm going to give it an eight just simply because it's easy to drink. I'm like, I don't... I don't really have any complaints about it. It's not my favorite beer I've ever had. It probably, if I lined them up, it would be down the line. But if this was at a party, I'm going to drink it because it's good. It goes down easy. And I'm on uh, my second one during this podcast. So we got that going for me so as well. Am I? <laughs> we just hey, spit listen, honesty you, with you. Mm -hmm. if, if you are listening on 550 KFY, we do encourage you to get over to our podcast. Our podcast is in its entirety and get over to our YouTube channel where you can see the video in its entirety. We don't turn the cameras off. So it's us chatting in the middle of the segments and uh, basically what the dumb things we talk about. And maybe, you know, a, a lady brewman's can make an appearance or something, something like that. But it's it's as raw as can be. So uh, so so jump on in there and check it out. Until next week, we are the Brewmance. His name is Mike Russell. My name is Rob Hunter. This is 550 KFY or the Brewmance Podcast. Wherever you get us, we appreciate you. Let's have a drink soon. Cheers, everybody.